Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a 1960s style psychedelic rock poster like the examples you're seeing here. These posters were created for legendary venues in San Francisco like the Fillmore West and the Avalon Ballroom that regularly booked rock musicians of the day. The poster you're looking at is the poster we'll be creating today. Our document is 1440 by 1800 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. We'll copy our base layer by dragging it to the new layer icon and then hide the original layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose posterize. We'll just be using three levels to keep the contrast dark. Press Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E on a Mac to take a picture of the composite image and place it on its own layer. We won't be needing the adjustment layer anymore so drag it to the trash. Go to the magic wand tool and click anywhere on the white area. Go to select and choose similar. This tells Photoshop to select all the white areas in our image. Change the selection into a quick mask by pressing the letter Q. Choose the Bucket tool and click anywhere in the white area around her head. Press the letter B to call up your brush and if you need to make your brush larger just press on the right bracket key. Now just paint over any areas of her hair or clothing that the paint bucket didn't fill in. Press the letter Q to make the quick mask into a selection and then press on the new layer icon. Press Alt Delete or Option Delete on a Mac to fill the selection with black. We'll rename this layer Highlights. We'll hide this layer and make the posterized girl active again. With your magic wand still active, click anywhere in the white area. And then as before, click Select and then Similar. We need to invert the selection, so press Control shift i or Command shift i on a Mac. We're creating a new layer for the shadows of the girl, so press on the New Layer icon and then press Alt-Delete or Option-Delete on a Mac to fill the selection with black. We'll rename this layer Shadows. Now that we have the posterized dark and light areas of the girl, we'll assign colors for each of them. Double-click on the Shadows layer to open up the Layer Style window. Click on Color Overlay and then click on the color at the top. I already know what color I want, so I'm going to type in 023EC6. The thing about psychedelic posters is that any color you choose, no matter how garish, dark, or light it is, will work. Anything goes. Now that we have the shadows color, let's choose the color for the highlights. Double click on the layer to open up the layer style window. Click on Color Overlay and click on the color at the top. For this color, I like 67FCB4. I'm going to do a little organizing, so I'll click on the top layer, shift click on the layer below it, and drag them into the new folder. This creates a new group. I'll rename it Girl. I'll grab the layers of the original Girl and drag them down to the new group folder and rename this Orridge for original. I'll open up the girl folder. So now we have all the layers we're going to be using at the top. We'll use this white layer to place a gradient over it. Go to the gradient tool and click on the gradient box at the top. I'm choosing this multicolored linear gradient that was very common in psychedelic posters. Go to the top of the image and while holding down the shift key click down on your mouse or pen and drag down to the bottom. The colors are really intense so we're going to click on the vibrance adjustment icon and make the saturation minus 45. By the way, the last step of our poster will be to add a paper texture. This uh, will not only add a realistic texture, but it will mute the colors as well. We're going to put the background and its adjustment layer into its own folder. So I'll drag them into the new folder and retitle this BKG for background. 
All right, so we're ready to set some text. Click on the character dialog box. I'm choosing a font called Cooper. So I'm going to type in Suzanne. And I'll highlight it. And press the foreground color, and that'll call up the color picker. I'm going to type in a nice purple color, and then press OK. We're going to be warping the text, but before we can do that, we need to rasterize it. So click Layer, Rasterize, and Type. Press Control T or Command T on a Mac to call up the transform, and then click on the little icon at the top so we can warp it. Drag the points of the grid, as well as on the grid lines, to make the word into a curvy shape it should kind of nestle into its immediate surrounding areas. I'll type in our last name now. I'll size it up and position it. I'll be covering typesetting in another tutorial, so for the sake of time, I won't be going over it here. Another way of rasterizing type is to right-click on the layer and click Rasterize Type. I already called up the Transform and clicked on the Warp tool. Just have fun manipulating the text. Think of it like it's clay. Don't be concerned if the text is a bit hard to read. It's, it's one of the characteristics of psychedelic posters. I'll type in Avalon and click on the color in the character box. That'll open up the color picker. I'm going to type in this mustardy yellow. I'll get it into position. It needs some kerning and I'll size it up a bit and I'll get it ready for the transform. Psychedelic posters fill shapes with text and all the words fit into each other as they fill gaps in empty space. I'm choosing a different font for the line of text at the top. The name is Smack Attack. You can download this font for free at blambot.com 60s rock posters always have a line in it somewhere with the name of the company or person who's producing the event. The font I'm choosing for the names of the bands is called Bell Bottom Laser and it can be downloaded for free at defont.com. It doesn't really matter how you stretch your text. The bottom line is just to have fun with it. So just repeat the process with each word until you have something like this. I'm not concerned about the color of the text at this point because I'm going to fill them with one gradient. So here's the layer with all the words in black. To activate its selection, I'll control click or command click on it. And then press Q for the quick mask. The text that we stretched a lot may have gotten a bit fuzzy at their edges, but we'll take care of that. Using our pen tool, we'll draw a path in between the edges of the two words and then right click to stroke the path. Make sure you choose a weight of the stroke that'll cover enough of the edges of both words. Just repeat the process with all the text whose edges could use some cleaning up. Press Q to get the selection, then press on the New Layer button to make a new layer. I'll hide the black layer by clicking off its eyeball I'll choose the Gradient tool and then click on the Gradient box. I'm going to choose the Linear Black and White Gradient. I'll click on the middle box and then click on the color below. I'll choose Black and click OK. That will put Black in the middle box. I'll click on the middle box and slide it over and then create a new box and choose White for that. I'll repeat this a couple more times, and by doing this, my gradient will have multi-levels of black, white, and grays. Go to the top of the poster, and while holding your shift key, click and drag down to the bottom. The gradient filled the text selection with the precise shades we assigned them. I'd like to give her hair more interest, so I'm going to add her highlights. I activated her posterized image and go to the magic wand tool. 
We'll click down in the gray area and go to Select and choose Similar. Press Q for the quick mask and B to call up your brush. We'll paint out everything but her highlights. And then we'll press Q to see the selection. We'll make a new layer, so click on the New Layer button and then hide the posterized girl so we can see our poster. And now we'll fill our highlight selection with black. To do that, press Alt-Delete or Option-Delete on a Mac. We'll rename the layer Hair Highlights. And then double-click on the layer to open up the Layer Style window. We'll assign a color to our hair highlights, so click on Color Overlay. Click on the box at the top. And then I'll type in a color I like for the hair. The finishing touch that will make our image look like it's a printed vintage poster is to add an old paper texture. There are great downloadable textures for free at cgtextures.com. I'll click on the paper to make it visible. In order to see the tones and the texture of the paper, we'll change the blending mode to multiply. The texture really adds a great vintage feel to it, but it also muted the color slightly. I'm going to pump up the saturation of the gradient background just a bit. We'll find our background and click on the adjustment layer. We'll adjust the saturation from minus 45 to minus 35. So here is our final 1960s style psychedelic rock poster. You can go really wild with your poster, so have fun making it. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.